again we gather either here or in the church or online or reading this at home. Wherever we are, it is good to join together in sharing this short reflective service as we consider the words of the prophet Isaiah and of Jesus himself. Our God offers us hospitality and God's welcome is generous. He is here among us meeting in our worship and in our fellowship. God longs to meet our needs as we approach him with hands open and arms outstretched. And the first hymn will be sung by David, I think. Karen, I'm everyone can join in, we just said David. Sorry, it's not David. <laughs> <laughs> right, Immortal Invisible is a strong text of praise to God. Hold on. Hold on. I've got it down as David Reading. Yes. Oh! Because he turned to me and said he could. Sorry, Right. right. Well. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. The mountain of the Lord. Here are the words that Isaiah, the son of Amos, spoke concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills. All the nations shall go to it and many people will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. Out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. The Lord will judge all the nations and will decide disputes for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Amen. And we come to our prayer of invocation. Loving God, open our eyes to the beauty of your holiness. Open our ears to the message of your word. Open our minds to the challenge of your truth. Open our hearts to the power of your love. Open our lives to the coming of your spirit, that we may truly worship you now and forever. Amen. Amen. And a prayer of adoration. God of beauty and power, wonder and light, we worship you for being who you are, more beautiful than the sunlight you created, stronger than the power that formed the universe, brighter than the light that banishes night, more wonderful than butterfly wings, falling snowflakes or rising dew. We worship you in adoration and praise. Amen. Now a prayer of confession and thanksgiving. Lord of reality, we dare to be honest with you. We come to this day of worship, battered by life and not sure which way to turn. Confusion rules the world and we have contributed to it. Confession is on our lips, but so is thanksgiving. We give you thanks for the support of friends and family, for the conviction that you are with us day by day, even when we cannot recognize your presence, for the deep hope that undergirds all human life, and for your constancy, steadying the swirls of change and indecision. Lord, help us to help each other to worship you. Amen. Now, as we all say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses,
So our first hymn is Immortal Invisible. It's a strong text of praise to God who created and sustains the lives of all his creatures. The text focuses on the creator of the universe, the invisible God, whose visible works in nature testify to his glory and majesty. The tune St. Daniel is based on Camlan Eddy Now, a hundred years from now, a traditional Welsh ballad popular in the early 19th century. It was first published as a hymn tune in John Roberts' Caniadae Cassidy, very well known to me, Hymns of the Sanctuary in 1839. The tune title refers to St. Denis, the patron saint of France. So if you don't like to hear on with David to sing. <coughs> Judah, and unless they mend their ways, they will be brought low. 
and their lofty pride will be humbled. They will hide in the caves in the terror of the Lord from the splendor of his majesty when he rises to terrify the earth. To be saved, they must beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks, cease their idolatry, no more warring, and instead follow the way of the Lord. Matthew quotes the words of Jesus from the Sermon on the Mount. Love your enemies, he says. Is that possible? Isn't it contradictory? For if we loved our enemies, Surely they would not be our enemies. Perhaps, however, that is precisely what Jesus is saying. Why should we have enemies? Would not the world be a better place if nobody had enemies? The message from Jesus is abundantly clear. Blessed are the peacemakers. In a letter to Reform recently, one writer suggested that because Jesus took exception to certain commercial activity in the temple and overturned a table or two, he would have supported those who broke into shops and set fire to cars in Minneapolis during spring 2020. I beg to disagree. In fact, I wrote saying so. Jesus was not a zealot. He did not join those who wanted to overthrow the Roman occupation of Israel. Enemies may arise from some form of coercive power or superiority over others, possibly for reasons of status or self-satisfaction. Such enmity may occur in the office, in the club or in the home. Even the Christian church has not been immune from such infighting. The bitterness arising from enemy-enemy relationships can last for years. Just think for a moment about Northern Ireland, over 350 years ago. That started. Now consider the big picture, the big world picture. Whole nations can have enemies with disastrous consequences. The 20th century is reckoned to have been the most violent in the history of the world. Dare we hope that for a more peaceful 21st century? It has not started well, but surely we must always have hope. One bright light is that a 20-year war that has cost nearly 108,000 lives has just ended. We must hope that a genuine peace will prevail, although initial signs do not look good. The number of casualties in that war includes over 2,360 US military killed and 20,000 US injured, some very seriously. 456 British killed, approximately, 485 other Europeans, 157 Canadians, and many others. It also includes over 65,000 Afghan security forces and over 38,000 Afghan civilians killed. President Biden, who clearly wants to be a peacemaker, has not been thanked by the media for his action in ending the war. On the contrary, he has been criticised and even vilified, obliquely referred to as an imbecile. Vilified for the short, short time span that was allowed for the withdrawal of personnel, resulting in chaos at Kabul airport. Is this criticism fair? Even if that withdrawal had been planned to occur over several weeks, the word would surely have spread like wildfire throughout Afghanistan. The world media compete with each other at announcing news, or even rumours of news, as speedily as possible. Nothing's kept secret these days in the news. Mobile phones are everywhere. So the airport chaos would almost certainly have occurred 
however meticulously and secretively it had been planned. Afghanistan is the seventh poorest country in the world, and the exodus probably means that its most qualified and skilled persons have already left or are about to leave. If world terrorism is ever to be eliminated, Afghanistan will need the support from the international community for years to come. Most of the people there are supported by grants and from the international community already. To make this happen, a peaceful Afghanistan, our politicians may need to do what some of them consider anathema to seek a way of working with the leaders of the countries that surround Afghanistan, namely Russia, China, Iran and Pakistan. Particularly Iran, an, an Islamic nation itself. And if anyone's going to in influence the Muslims, it will be the Muslims themselves. These countries may hold the peace in Afghanistan, the key to peace. It is surely in their common interest to have a stable country within their midst. There is no shame nor defeat in dialogue with adversaries. Perhaps it's long overdue. As President Biden has said, it is time to end forever wars. Isn't it also time to take advantage of the current situation and start building trust between erstwhile enemies. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. I leave those thoughts with you. And now, the second hymn. By the second hymn, Amazing Grace, <coughs> if there was a national folk hymn for America, this would probably be it. This well-loved and often sung hymn, written by John Newton in the late 18th century, is a powerful assurance and declaration of the grace of God working in all our lives. Having just heard what we've heard, through many dangers, toils and snares, I have already come. It was grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace my fears relieved.
now prayer of intercession. When the seas are grey and foreboding, come to us as Christ the pilot and guide us to the harbour light. We pray for our world, for politicians steering away through the complexities of life, for journalists seeking to read the signs of the times honestly, for those around us who feel trapped by circumstances or who have lost their way. Help us to navigate your world that we might know that the larger the island of knowledge, the longer is the shoreline of wonder. Lord, when the sea of life looks overwhelming, may the Spirit be our rudder and strength. Calm the tempest, strengthen our faith. We pray for those beleaguered by events, those in crisis, those who are coping with illness or pain. When our ship is buffeted, may your grace hold us together. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today, whether here in church, at home, or online. Although not together physically, it is good that we are able to be together spiritually and to participate in worship in this somewhat limited way. We're going outside, I think, because it's not raining. Before I do that, I'll read a blessing now. Go out from here with a pocket full of free gifts. To give to those you meet, give freely your kindness and concern. As a token of the greater love of God, give freely your time and effort. As a token of the sacrifice of Jesus, give freely your help and friendship. As a token of the upholding spirit. And may all you give and all you do Thank you. 